We're going to be starting in a few minutes, everyone. Teachers, I hope you can hear me. Um, I have our email address there at the bottom. If anybody wants to share their photos of their drawings today, or if your class has any questions or wants to uh, request a follow-up presentation, uh, please just email us at that email down there, and we'll make sure to get that arranged for you. Thanks. I believe we are already live streaming. I do see that most excellent. Very good. Hi, everyone, and welcome. Um, my name is uh, Karen Griffin, and I am one of the state park interpreters uh, here at Carpinteria State Beach. Carpinteria State Beach is a state park. Um, state parks are not that different from the parks you might have in your neighborhood. They're special places that are set aside for the public to enjoy. And there's lots of reasons why a state park might be set aside. Um, some are set aside for some cool recreational activities like um, maybe going on a dune uh, buggy ride um, in some dunes. Some are set aside for cool geological features, some for cultural or historical um, reasons, um, and others are set aside because they have um, really cool environments that we want to protect. Um, and Carpinteria uh, has all of those elements 
um, and I'm really lucky to work here. Um, and today, uh, what we're going to be focusing on is one of my environments is tide pools. Now, this um, is a shortened webinar version of one of our ports cast, which we will be introducing next year. Um, if you have any questions, I'm afraid I can't answer them during this program, but you can email us at carpenteriaestatebeach at gmail.com and we can get back to you with those questions. Uh, we can also schedule a follow-up with your classroom or if you have a summer camp coming up and you have um, a group of kids who would like to do a program like this, you can also um, try to schedule that with us and we can see if we can get you in during the summer. Okay, so back to draw and learn. Um, hopefully you guys have some paper and some pencils and some good erasers. Um, if you happen to have rulers, that's awesome. If not, you don't really need them. Um, that's a bonus, okay? Now, if you don't have those things, we're going to be starting off with um, a quick introduction to tide pools. And I'm gonna try to keep this quick because uh, the feedback I've gotten is that you guys wanna draw more and listen less. So. Um, while we're doing um, the introduction to what a tide pool is and what makes tide pools awesome, uh, feel free to gather up your drawing supplies. We'll start drawing um, after our introduction to tide pools. Okay, guys. There we go. And great. So um, tide pools are an amazing resource that we have here at Carpinteria State Beach and they happen when the tide is low. In a world of waves and shifting sand, rocky shores where shorebirds land, a wondrous place where secrets abound, let's explore the magic of the tide pools we've found. Moon orbits the earth and earth orbits the sun. Their gravity's rhythm pulls at the ocean. The cycle repeats with high and low phases, twice a day in these intertidal spaces. Shore crabs scuttle and scurry around, hiding in cracks, eating algae they found. Anemones sway, their tentacles dance, carnivorous animals that look like plants. Barnacles cling, firmly attached, filtering food as tidal waves crash. Hermit crabs battle for a tangula shell in low tide pools where creatures dwell. Starfish cling to rocks, their colors so bright, regenerating limbs, a remarkable sight. Snail suction cup, foot, and armor-like shell keep them safe in the tidal swell. Tide pools are nature's classroom, grand, where learning unfolds as we understand the elegant adaptions of nature's design. We observe and we draw the creatures we find. Okay, guys, so that was a little introduction to my tide pools. We have an entire tide pool program. If maybe that wasn't quite enough information for you, um, there we go. And um, I wanted to take a second to talk a little bit about nature journaling, which is what we're doing today. Um, you guys have probably done a lot of drawing in your life. Um, maybe you've colored inside of coloring books. Um, Maybe um, you learned how to write your letters, right? That's some of the first drawing that we learned how to do is shapes and numbers and letters. Um, maybe some of you guys are really good cartoonists and you draw um, simplified faces with really big eyes so that you can see funny expressions like being excited or being sad, just like emoticons. Emoticons are little drawings. Today, what we're gonna be doing 
is we're going to be um, nature drawing or nature journaling um, or drawing realistic things. Now with this kind of drawing, um, there are a couple of things that um, people struggle with and that's getting proportions correct. Um, getting things to look the way that you want them to look. But the cool thing about um, nature drawing is that you can draw a million lines. Two of those lines are probably gonna be ones that you like. What we do is we just erase lines and we make more lines until we get it the way that we want. And while we're doing that, we're observing our subject. And while we're observing our subject, we're learning about our subject. So this is the kind of drawing that scientists do, observational drawing. You may have heard of the scientific method, but really there are many, many, many scientific methods. And observing a creature and drawing them over and over again uh, until they look the way you want them to is a scientific method. It's one of the methods. Now, when I was in kindergarten, I was told that some people are born able to draw, artists, you're artistic. You've got the left side of your brain and that's where you live. Um, and some people weren't. And because I wasn't good at handwriting, I figured I just wasn't good at drawing and I never tried. And it wasn't until I was older and um, I was at a Bob Ross themed birthday party um, that I heard this, talent is a pursued interest. Anything you're willing to practice, you can do. And that's when I started practicing drawing. And it turns out um, that drawing is like anything else. No one expects you to be able to write your name um, when you first come into preschool. You have to practice. Not only that, but you have to practice in many different ways. First, maybe you might... Um, draw lines and you have big lines and then you're drawing your letters in those lines. And the first letters you might draw are O and L because those are circles and lines and you're familiar with those shapes, right? So drawing isn't different than learning how to write. It's just something that you practice over and over again. Um, now, I got rained out today. You might notice that I'm in my bit of a, a cave of a visitor center because right before you guys came on, it started raining cats and dogs. I'm gonna give you guys a little glimpse of my park back here. All right, and um, we're going to get started with drawing. Now, the first step is you wanna get some reference material. Now, hopefully you're able to come visit me at my state park. Um, I'm just a little south of Santa Barbara and a little north of Los Angeles. And if that's too big of a drive for you, that's not a problem. Any park, your backyard, um, the community center inside of your apartment complex, anywhere works. Find something and you're gonna observe it. Now, since we're indoors today, I've gotten us some reference photos, um, which is also good for animals that are quick and skittish. Um, and that's what we're gonna start with, okay? so. The tide pools have many creatures. I think we talked about chitons and mussels and lipbits and sea stars. Um, but today we're gonna pick one creature because we don't have a lot of time. And that creature is my blue banded hermit crab. Now blue banded hermit crabs, they live inside the shells of uh, brown or black tegula um, snails. You might have heard them called turban snails too, because their shell looks like a turban. Um, but since we have wavy turban snails here, I tend to call them by their uh, more scientific name, tegula. Okay, so um, the first step I would do is I would go on the internet, doo, 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 and I would look for reference pictures of, uh, let's start with the, the shell that these guys live in, right? Okay, so let's get some reference pictures. There's one. And there's one, and there's one. All right, that looks pretty good. All right, now, remember when you were starting to learn how to write, um, you probably had a paper with lines on it, your notebook paper that has lines on it, right? So one way to work on proportions, excuse me, where's my iPad? One moment, technical difficulties. 
Do, do, do. Hello, there it is. All right. So um, one of the first steps um, when we're um, drawing uh, to help us with proportions is uh, something called gridding, um, just like the lines on your notebook paper. Um, now, if you have a reference sheet that's printed out, um, the easy way for you to do this is you would um, you could just fold your paper into equal squares. Uh, that would get you your grid lines. So for example, oh, I need that to be much bigger. Maybe I'll have a line here. Hang on one second, let me make this the big brush. And a line here and a line here. Okay. So when I'm just trying to think of like, how big is everything? That kind of gets me an idea of how I'm gonna transfer this to um, the paper I'm drawing on, right? Okay, so those are my grid lines. I kind of know how it's gonna go. Uh, the next thing is you guys probably know how to draw shapes, right? Um, squares, triangles, lines. So the next part is to um, divide up your um, drawing into different lines. So let's see, different shapes. Um, I feel like there's a, excuse me. Oh, I'm on eraser. I feel like maybe there's a line here. And I think I see a triangle up here. And if you had your reference photo printed out, um, you could just draw right on top of your reference photo. Or if you're like me and you're doing it digitally so that people can see, um, you can just um, draw as you go. Now, I think I see another triangle here. And this is kind of a square here that bulges out. And then there's kind of a diagonal here. So let's take a look at what this looks like. And these are my shapes. I've got kind of a, a trapezoid here and I'll get you a different color. That kind of a, I've got I start with a triangle up here from that triangle. I've got a bit of a trapezoid. Um, I've got another triangle here. And then I've got a square that's kind of divided in half, but is missing a notch off of this side. All right, that's kind of the, those are the, those are the shapes that are in my drawing. I've broken my drawing down to shapes, okay? So now that I've uh, draw, broken my drawing down to shapes, um, we can start drawing. Now we're gonna turn on and off our reference. So, I believe we started with a triangle and I'm just going to draw my triangle and you guys can start drawing now if you'd like. There's like a triangle there at the top. We look, yep, triangle at the top. All right, and then I had kind of a trapezoid going on. So this went out this way. And then I made another line here and I made another line here. So that'll be our second line. We've got a triangle and I'm, underneath that triangle, we've got a little bit of a trapezoid. All right. Now, the um, next thing that we had was a triangle, another triangle. So we'll just make my triangle here. That was my next triangle. Then I had kind of a funky square. And I believe we divided that square into half and then cut off one of the sides. That'll need to be bigger. There we go. So let me see, we had our Triangle on top, our trapezoid, 
another triangle, triangle, and a triangle. That's what I'm gonna, that's what I'm gonna start with. Those are the shapes I'm gonna start with. I'm usually drawing with a pencil um, and sketching it out like that. Okay. So the next step is I'm gonna look at my reference photo and I see um, that things are a bit rounded. So I'm gonna change my color here for you guys. Now you guys can smudge on your paper um, or um, make it so that your lines are fine and you can draw over your lines um, for your second one here. Um, let's see. So here at the top, if I'm looking at my reference photo, it, um, it's a bit of a circle there at the top. And then from there, it kind of comes around into my um, first curve. And then from there, it's gonna come around into another curve. And these two meet. So I'm gonna go ahead and do a little bit of erasing because that line doesn't look quite right. And then there, now those meet. That looks better. And if I'm using a pencil, I can smudge the pencil. Maybe I don't have the greatest eraser. So the great thing about um, nature journaling and nature drawing is even if you don't have the world's best eraser, the lines that you erase and redraw all of that leftover pencil markings, they're gonna become your shading and they're gonna give you a head start on shading. So don't worry if you got handed the world's worst pencil today and you have to erase a lot. Um, that is not a flaw, it's a feature. It's one of the reasons why I have a hard time uh, drawing with the iPad is because I'm used to smudging and getting all of my lines in there, okay? So I've got these two lines. Now let's see, what was my next line? Um, that's gonna be the opening of the shell, which we've made in this kind of triangle here. So maybe we'll do that line, opening there, and the curve down. And then I had another curve down here. All right, and next we have the triangle. And the triangle kind of, if I'm looking at my reference photo, the triangle kind of tucks under here and kind of arches up at the edge here. So, there we go. Now this line doesn't look right. I want it to arch up a little bit more. So I'm just gonna smudge it. and get more of that arch. And then I'm gonna redraw my lines so that they look a little bit closer to my reference photo. All right. So let's see. Now I think this line actually curves down a little bit more in a downward way. So I'm gonna redraw that line. And I think this line actually curves up. So I'm gonna redraw that line a little bit. And then I'm gonna smudge out my old lines with my bad eraser. There's my bad eraser, yuck, that's okay. And I think this one is actually a bit more like this. And okay, and then this does, this line does end up going all the way in. And darken that one down. I think this one curves a little bit more. And it's nice and dark in there. I think this actually comes out a little bit more. So I'm just gonna smudge and redraw. And you never need to be perfect and you never need to be in a rush because when you're drawing the shell, you're observing the shell. When you're observing the shell, you're learning about the creature that used to live in the shell. So maybe when you're redrawing this line, 
because you realize from the reference photo that this line actually matches up with this other line here. Maybe you start to think like, wait, how does this snail grow its shell? I noticed that it looks to have kind of a tiny version of the shell at the top up here and that that shell gets bigger and bigger. And when I look over here at this line, it almost looks like it's growing and it's attaching itself right here to my creature. And that's actually how a turban snail grows. When it's a baby, it's this big, and then it keeps growing its shell in a spiral all around. And maybe you, uh, maybe you already knew that, but maybe by drawing it, um, you were able to kind of notice that about the shell. And that's, um, that's what this is all about um, because we have to observe the shell in order to draw it. And um, while we're observing the shell, um, we're noticing different things about it. So I'm noticing that it's dark over here. It's got kind of this black stuff. Now what's that black stuff? And why isn't that black stuff on, the, on all of the shell? Why is it just over here? So it turns out turban snails um, have a skin. They have a skin that's over their shell and that protects them from the acid that's in the ocean because um, snail shells uh, dissolve in acid. So they have this protective covering. So we can tell that this snail um, has been and not around for a long time because it's lost that protective skin that it has over its shell. And that's where you can see those iridescence um, peeking through. All right, so uh, that's the turban snail. And um, we can redraw the turban snail over and over and over again. And um, after you get the lines the way you want them, you can start shading. And shading can be as simple as just drawing in with your pencil and then smudging it with your finger. Um, and like I said, if you, um, if you had to redraw your lines a bunch of times like I did in order to get them to look the way you wanted to, you probably already have the beginnings of your um, the beginnings of your shading. And after you've gotten the shading where you want, and all shading is, is drawing um, where you think um, the sun isn't shining. So if you don't think there's a lot of sunlight down here where there's a crevice, like if you, if you took a flashlight and you shined a flashlight onto the turban snails, what parts would be dark? And just like with drawing, your first line doesn't have to be right. Your second line doesn't have to be right. Your fifth line doesn't have to be right. You just keep drawing over and over again until you get it the way you want it to. Now, once you think you do have your highlight, your, um, your shadows in good, um, the last step um, is to put in details. So like if there were eyes um, and then also to put in highlights. So with highlights, uh, I just if use an eraser. So if you have an eraser on your pencil, um, you're going to put the highlights. If the shadows are where the sun doesn't shine, uh, the highlights are where the sun would shine. So just on, just on like, nope, that's too bright. There we go. Just on like the very top where my shell is going to hit that sunlight. It's dark here. Just give it a little bit of highlights where the sun's gonna be hitting it um, and that will help you out. Okay, now you can redraw your turban snail over and over again. We're gonna move on uh, to our hermit crab that lives in um, a turban snail shell. All right, gallery. So again, we're gonna start off with a reference photo. Now we're gonna be doing a blue banded hermit crab uh, the hermit crabs that you guys might be most familiar with are the ones that unfortunately are found in pet stores. Now, hermit crabs are amazing creatures that live in an amazing environment. And that environment's the intertidal zone. And that has waves crashing in 
and crashing out. And it's a very dynamic and fierce environment. And you can't make that environment in your living room. So um, hermit crabs might be able to live in a tank, but they can't thrive in a tank because you cannot mimic their natural um, habitat. Now, um, hermit crab, these guys are protected and you can't take them from my beach. So um, what they do, and because hermit crabs don't breed good in captivity, because like I said, they're alive, but they're not thriving. Um, we import all of ours from Indonesia um, and it's just not a good trade. So hermit crabs are amazing to study. They make bad pets, get a millipede or a praying mantis. Um, those guys are much easier to uh, keep if you want it invertebrate. Highly recommend uh, fading death blue, blue fading death beetles. Those are fantastic. All right. So one of the reasons why we uh, draw creatures is for science. And you can see here um, I've got um, a scientific hermit crab, blue banded hermit crab specimen, right? Um, that's saved in a museum. And if you were a scientist at a museum, you might see this specimen and think that that's what this creature looks like. But all of its cool colors have faded um, after death. So um, scientific illustrations are very important uh, to show us um, what it looked like when it was vibrant and alive. So if we look at this photo, we can see why it's called the blue banded hermit crab. We can also see what the rest of its body looks like that's hiding in that shell. Um, and it's much more dynamic and it gives a much better representation of what this cool creature looks like. All right. All right, we're gonna start with the same thing we did before uh, where we put in our grid lines. All right, those are my grid lines. Um, and again, print it out, uh, draw on it with Sharpie, fold it in half. Uh, your reference photos, your reference photos, use them as much as you want. All right. Next um, trick is to draw in our shapes. So um, for this one, I've done, I've done, um, we've got our, oh, let me go back to, there we go. So we've got our circle here. And then that circle is inside of a circle that's bigger. And I'm just gonna practice drawing those circles on my reference photo, because I know I'm eventually gonna draw them. And then kind of where the two circles meet, he has a funny little hat. I'm gonna draw a little hat in there, okay? And then we have a triangle that curves down, a curvy downy triangle. Um, and then for the legs, they're segmented and I love drawing segmented things, um, but I'm just going to, um, for this one, um, I'm just gonna draw lines to represent the legs. And then I can draw the segments in later. I love segmented invertebrates like um, isopods, really polies. Um, and then he's got little oval eyes. Okay, so um, when I'm looking at my, my little references, I can kind of remember, all right, I'm gonna draw a little circle and I'm gonna put that inside a bigger circle. And then I'm gonna draw a hat. And then there's gonna be um, a rounded triangle that comes off of that hat. Um, and I've got legs that are coming down off of that. All right, I think I'm ready to draw my picture. All right, let me remember. I started with a circle. Now this is a technique that cartooners use. They draw a hundred lines and then they just keep erasing them until they get the line they want. All right, so that's gonna start my circle. And then that circle was inside a bigger circle. All right, you guys can go ahead and draw along with me. And then near there, there was a funny hat, funny hat. Okay, and then coming off of that funny hat, 
was a triangle, but the triangle had a little bit of a curve. The triangle had a little bit of a curve. Excellent. And um, then I had my legs. My legs started here. One leg was very close to my shell. My other leg started here and it had a bit of a bend. And then I had a big claw leg. So this leg came out a little bit, I remember that. And let's see, I had two oval eyes that were coming off. And I believe I had another claw that came off. Now that doesn't look right, so I redraw it. And then I redraw it. Now I'm looking at my reference photo and this is bigger and this is smaller. All right, and then I believe I had some sort of trapezoid that kind of connected all of this together. And he had one antenna that was coming out this way and he had one antenna was kind of going off this way. All right, so that's where I start. And it's gonna be just like when you were making the turban snail. Um, and with segmented legs, I like to just build them in. So I know that this leg is pointy. And then I'm gonna make, I'm gonna make my next segment. And then I'm gonna make my next segment. And when I'm making the segmented legs, I might think, well, how many segments are in the legs? I need to know how many segments there are because I'm drawing them, right? And maybe my reference photo isn't, um, isn't exactly what I want. So while I'm drawing, maybe I look up an anatomy photo and now I'm drawing and I'm learning and I'm learning about all of the different things that are in my, um, that are part of my crab. Um, so that is, that's not only how you draw a hermit crab, but the cool thing with this information is that you can use it to draw whatever you want. All you need is something you find outside or maybe um, a reference photo that you find on the internet or in the book on the library. And you don't need to know how to draw and you don't need my step-by-step -step instructions. All you need to do is grid and break it down into um, shapes that you're comfortable with. And if it doesn't look right the first time, don't worry, just erase and draw again over and over until you get the creature that looks the way that you want it to. And it shouldn't be stressful and there's never a wrong line it's just recreating those lines over and over again. And every time you do, you learn a little bit more about the fascinating creature that you're drawing. Okay, guys, I have gone five minutes over, like I always do. I hope you're all still with me. Um, and again, um, just go ahead and redraw your creatures over and over again until you like them. If you'd like to show me your creatures, you can send them to carpenteriastatebeach at gmail.com. Um, or again, if you'd like a follow-up or if you'd like to do any more of these programs, uh, you can go ahead and send us an email there as well. Okay, everyone, I hope you've had fun drawing with me today. And um, here's my face. I hope you've had fun drawing with me today and I'd love to draw with you anytime in the future. Uh, and maybe go a little bit more into depth about some of our tide pool creatures. So have a good day and stay safe. And I'll see you guys hopefully at another Quartzcast. Bye.